Today on What the Heck is Going On Now, we're going to mend some brake lines and here are the tools I use. No, sorry, those are the wrong tools. Here are the brake line tools I use. I don't give my best performance on a hacksaw, so it will be substituted with a skinny wheel. Before we can bend the brake line tubing, we need a starting point and an ending point. This is the end point bulkhead fitting. As far as making the flex line to the wheel, that's easy. Just order them pre-made. Make sure to get the plastic coated ones because they look rad. The thing I will say about the flex line is try to route it in a particular way so that it doesn't get watered up in the spinning tire. After determining the path of the brake line, use heavy wire for the template. I use TIG wire, but coat hanger wire would also work. Just make sure it's nice and straight before you start. At some point, you will have to use measurements instead of a visual reference to determine the bending points. Make sure to include the tube radii in the measurements. I use a tubing bender to bend the template wire so that the transfer is more seamless. The brake line tubing will more than likely come in a coil, so you have to straighten it out first. They sell fancy straightening rollers to do this, but I find it weirdly therapeutic to stress over straightening it by hand. This shot isn't in order, but it shows the deburring process. I use a file for the outside. When you are done with the wire templates, you can simply transfer the pattern over to the brake line tubing. It's real important that you made the wire templates an exact fit with all the correct twist and bends. Spending the extra time on the wire templates to make them precise will give you less headaches later. The temptation is to rack it up and start bending, but it's been my experience that it's better to double or even triple check to make sure that you haven't made a mistake or gotten something backwards. You can, and probably will, make small adjustments later, but if you have completely botched a bend, there's no fixing it and you'll just have to start over. The radius of the bend takes up some real estate. The radius on my bender is about 7 16 of an inch, so that dimension has to be factored in on the starting point. I only use AN or JIC double flare connections. Bubble flare and reverse flare connections might be more robust, but they are not as common or adaptable. Annealing the tubing to make it softer for flaring is optional. It seems to help make a better flare, especially on Dash 3 tubing, which is the only size I use for brakes. Put the tube sleeve in this way before you flare it. Drop some grease on the flaring cone to keep the stainless tubing from eating it up. I used a rigid brand flaring tool. It does a nice job and is not too ridiculously priced. I'll put an Amazon link in the description. One more thing on this subject. You can only start the line radius so close to the fitting as the tube sleeve and flaring tool need a certain amount of room, so plan accordingly. As you can see, the tube nut, unlike the tube sleeve, will easily go around the tube radius after it's bent. If you need to start the radius closer to the fitting, assemble the tube to the fitting and put the assembly in the bender like this. It makes the whole thing about a quarter inch shorter. I do a progress check after each bend. Lock down the line to the fitting to check and make adjustments before moving on to the next bend. I still use the template, but also mark along the actual tube for directions. To determine which way to twist, I mark a line along the tube opposite of the way it is supposed to twist. This mark is the final cut to size. For brake line hardware, I use 3 16 or dash 3 stainless steel tubing. The fittings are always zinc plated steel, never aluminum. On rare occasions, I'll use stainless fittings, like uh, if it's going into aluminum. The passenger side is going to be a piece of cake. Now here is where I want the tubing to end up, so I have to start the bend 7 16 before this mark. Doing a clocking twist adjustment. The final cut. Oh man, super important. Make sure to clean out the line when you're done.
I got these little line saddles from CarTech, Weld, and Ziptie. That's all there is to it. What do you do with a $40 brake line coat hanger?